if you are a fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Fast Pitch TV show. Now, if you found our show on MySpace, YouTube, Facebook, or another video sharing site, please make sure and visit our website at fastpitch.tv www.fastpitch.tv It's the place to find all of our past episodes and the place to keep up with our future episodes too. They come out every week. Now I'd like to thank our sponsor, Softball Junk. Please visit their website at well there's that softballjunk.com of course. Now for the last uh, two weeks I've been bringing you clinics or for the last four months I've been bringing you clinics from Softball Con. It was a great softball conference. Go to softballcon.net to find out more information about the conference and to find out information about next year's conference. It's in January. I think it'll be another great conference. Now this week I am bringing you part three of Lisa Haber's clinic at Softball Con. If you have not seen part one or two, you may want to go back a couple of episodes, okay, and check it out. I think it starts with episode 153 and start with the first segment of Elisa's clinic. Her clinic was titled How I Hit or How I Learned to Hit 400. And this segment of the clinic is on the swing. So let's go to this part of the clinic right after a word from our sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. So now we'll talk about the swing. The actual swing, what everyone's here for, right? Yeah? Okay. So, um, so when you think about consistent hitters and you look at great hitters that, you know, like Jessica Mendoza or Crystal Bustos, and all those great, any of these people that are, Caitlin Lum, Tasha Watley, they hit for great average, what do they do, right? What they do is they generate as much speed as possible in their swing while being compact at the same time. In other words, they minimize movement, like we were talking about before, and they maximize efficiency, okay? Minimize movement to maximize efficiency, and I guarantee you ask them, what are they trying to do when they swing the bat, what's their end goal? They'll always tell you, hard ground ball, line drive. Okay, we don't go up trying to hit home runs. Home runs happen, but we're trying to hit hard ground balls, line drives, okay? So, just like I started with the lower body and the stance, the foundation, right? The foundation for a good swing, it starts in the lower body, okay? So, let's go back here. I did stance, stride, and now the beginning of the swing starts with the tiniest little movement. It's called the heel plant, just like this. That's all it is. That's the beginning part right here. All I have to do is just get to this heel plant here. Now with heel plant, again, everything stays on the inside, inner half of our legs, okay? We don't go out like this. We don't do weight transfer, okay? We need to keep everything center close, close together in the body. Now what happens from here is we pivot on the ball of our back foot. The ball of our back foot, not the toe. Who's been told to turn their toe or hit on their toe or squish the bug? Squish the bug's a really popular one. Squish the bug sometimes kind of turns into this. See how I'm on my toe? I'm not, that force that I'm generating with this back leg isn't going forward anymore, it's going up. See how my body goes up when I go up on my toe? If I'm on the ball of my foot, it's going forward. I'm able to push, it's more athletic. Okay, does that make sense? The back ankle and knee turn in towards the front side in the swing, so don't pay attention to my upper body, just pay attention to my lower body. We turn in to the front half, and what we want to make sure is that we think that our, what happens is that our back hip uncoils to turn into our front hip. It's not the other way around. You see a lot of young hitters that are front side hitters, and what they do is they let this front hip, they turn with the front hip, and it flies open, okay? And if my hips fly open too early, what happens? You lose almost all of your power, right? Because my hands are still back here, okay? They still haven't even gone through the strike zone and I've already lost 80% of my power, let's say, okay? So we wanna make sure we think about uncoiling from the back to the front. Our backside uncoils and turns and rotates into a firm front side, right? Firm front side, we don't wanna have our knee bent. We also don't wanna have our knee locked out like this because we want to avoid extremes. Oh, I've been paying attention, thank you. Thanks, Teresa. So, 
we turn into a firm front side. It's almost like this side is like a brick wall almost, and you're trying to push into it. So you're trying to generate that force to hit the ball hard. Okay? And then make sure that um, the make sure that we always maintain balance at all times. Again, avoiding extremes. At any time when I do lessons back in California, I teach young kids how to hit, and any time in their swing, I can tell them to freeze, and if they aren't able to jump in their swing and land and be in athletic stance, then there's, there's some kind of extreme happening and they need to fix it, right? You always wanna make sure you have that balance, that good knee bend weight in the center of our body, okay? That's the lower body. And the reason, I mean, that's the lower body, and why would I focus on the lower body first is because the lower body is what initiates the swing path for the upper body to follow, okay? And that's our hands. When we talk about upper body, we're talking about our hands at this point, okay? So when we get to heel plant, when we finally do get to heel plant here, okay? Once our body feels that, what happens is that our hands start moving forward, right? Because we're trying to hit the ball. So what happens is, is that it starts at our elbow, and our elbow goes forward, our hands stay close to our body, not out like this, right, because this can lead to casting. We want to keep our hands inside the ball, is what the, the cue word, inside the ball. Elbow initiates the forward movement into a position that I've been, told, I've been taught as, it's called slot. Okay, slot position. Launching point, I think, is another popular one. I'm not sure what other people might call it, but for now we'll call it slot position. Okay, so, this is what initiates the idea that we're getting on plane with the ball. If I have my bat here in this parallel position with the knob pointing towards the pitcher and the end of the bat facing towards the catcher, and I'm getting on plane with the ball, look what happens how long I rotate. Say the ball's like right there. Look how long my bat stays through the zone, right? And like I said in the beginning, we're giving ourselves the best chance for success. And if my bat is traveling through the zone for as long as it, of a time that is, then I'm gonna have a better chance of hitting the ball. Right? So what happens, what are our hands doing when we're getting on plane, right? So let's just say, let me get a ball here. Let's say the ball's right down the middle here. And I'm trying to get on plane with the ball. Okay, so I'm stance, stride, heel plant, initiate the hand movement into slot with that front elbow. Okay, my hands are close to my body. See how I have palm up, palm down here with my top and bottom hand? Okay, now what happens is my bottom hand is gonna do what's called hammer the nail. It's gonna pull that barrel through the zone, and it's like my bottom hand is a hammer, and I'm hammering a nail. You don't hammer a nail like this. You don't hammer a nail like this. If I want to hammer that ball, I have to hammer it straight on, on the same plane as the ball's traveling, okay? Bottom hand hammers the nail. Top hand, we're on page two, if you guys, yeah. <laughs> so, top hand is going to stay on top of the, the ugh, sorry. The top hand keeps the barrel above the ball and the swing path in a linear motion. That's fancy talk for skipping the rock, or throw the frisbee, I think is what I put on there. I put throw the frisbee, and I realized that maybe a lot of people throw frisbees like this, I guess. But I always want to throw a frisbee like that. I don't know. Skipping a rock. Has everyone skipped a rock on, on like a lake before? Like that. We're going to skip the rock. So if you watch my top hand, it's going to come parallel with the ball here, so I'm getting on plane. Okay? So that's essentially what's happening as I get to contact. Okay? So hammer the nail, skip the rock, throw the frisbee. So that way when I do get to contact, here, I'm palm up, palm down, just like I was when I was in slot. And it doesn't matter where this ball is, okay? Because if your front elbow is initiating your hand movement, your front elbow is going to go towards the ball without you knowing it. So if this ball was high, if it was a high pitch, my front elbow is going to go up, and then look where my hands are. I'm palm up, palm down, essentially, right? And all I have to do is hammer the nail, throw the frisbee. It doesn't matter if it's a low pitch. All I gotta do is get on plane and go down and get it, palm up, palm down, okay? And so now when we're at contact, notice how I am at contact here, right? My arms are bent. Who has been told that they should be extended at contact? Anyone? Do we know why? Do we wanna do a fun demonstration? Teresa, come on up here. So what I want you to do is I'm gonna hold my hand straight out like this I let's imagine I'm contacting ball, right? So go ahead and tr push against me. So push that way, yep, push. Okay, <laughs> I'm pretty strong, right guys? I mean, <laughs> I'm not a 90 pound weakling, but she was able to do pretty easily, right? Okay, now I have my arms bent. Now go. Harder, right? Yeah. It's harder to do that. Okay, thanks for demonstrating, Teresa. <laughs> right, so 
We want to make sure that our arms remain slightly bent at contact so we can still generate power as we go through the ball through contact. And then what we do is we stay through contact two, three times through the ball, and then finally we can extend. Here is where you're going to extend. So at, one, at that point, you want to have the end of the bat facing towards the pitcher. And then from here, just let your hands take the natural swing path. From here, it doesn't matter if you hold on to the bat with two hands. It doesn't matter if you let go with one hand. It doesn't matter whether you end high, low. That's just, it's natural. Wherever you're not, like gravity's going to take you, wherever physics takes you. As long as you're extending three times through the ball. What we want to avoid is we want to avoid this. Where you go like this, and then you just go, right? Stay strong through contact. Extend three times through the ball is what I like to say. Okay? Um, our head stays down on the chin. On our, sorry, our chin stays down on the back shoulder after contact. And the reason why is because you get in a bad habit if you take your, if you look off looking for the hit, like you know you hit that ball really good and you're like, ooh, I want to see where it goes. After a while, it starts becoming a habit, a bad habit, and then you're going to start taking your eyes off the ball before you even make contact. Right? So we want to avoid those bad habits and make sure we keep our chin on our back shoulder through contact. And then we can go run. Then we all the time in the world run around the bases when you hit a home run, right? Right. Okay? And then finally, I say at the very end there, maintain balance. So at any time in my swing, even after the follow through, even as violent and as explosive as we've been in our swing, I still have to be able to jump. Okay? I have to keep my weight pretty center. And what I like to see in hitters is that after they're done, they have their nose, chin, belly button all in line with the midline of your body. Okay, everyone knows the midline is straight down the middle. Okay, keep everything centered and balanced. If you enjoyed today's clinic, now each week I'm going to be showing you more clinics from Lisa's, uh, Lisa Haber's clinic. So make sure you stop back and check those. Like I said, new clinics or new shows usually come out on Thursdays or Fridays. Now before we go on, I want to make sure everyone knows we have an app for the iPhone and Android phone. Just go to your phone's app store and search softball and you'll find it. Don't forget to check our website at fastpitch.tv. Become a fan of the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash fastpitch.tv. You can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash fastpitch.tv, of course. Well, that's all for today's show, so goodbye and thanks for watching. Fast Pitch TV Network.